Hey guys, so what I'm doing, um, I don't know, getting rid of everything that is inside the car because I think I'm gonna have to clean it up. Not really clean, clean, not gonna go to bare metal and then uh, I'm gonna prime it and if I know the color eventually, if I make up my mind about the color of the exterior, I'm gonna paint the, at least the interior now when uh, when I clean it. So that's what I'm doing, I'm cleaning up. Oops, watch your feet. So, about this thing, I don't know guys if you have any other idea, but I have a perfect idea about it. I'm just gonna discard it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? So I just think I'm gonna remove it and use the space for maybe a subwoofer. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, I'm not planning to put that back. So if you have a different idea, just let me know, but I think that's redundant. All right, so almost everything is out. Almost. Because we still have this light here and this cover, so I'm gonna have to take these out. So I see I have to. This lens turns, but when it is in this position, it it shows the head of a flathead screw. Ah. So I need to go get a screwdriver now. Oh my god. <clears throat> I used to work in limousines, not in such small cars. <clears throat> this time I took the, sh the shortcut. That. There's even switch here for a light, so this light comes on when you open the, the hat. Wow! Okay. Do I remember that this is the harness for the hatch and for the light? Of course not, so I'm gonna have to oops I'm gonna have to mark it. Alright now we can tell that everything is out. Every single thing. So we can start cleaning. And I think I'm gonna start cleaning from the, the ceiling from up down. The ceiling is not that bad. It's not bad at all actually. Just I'm gonna get rid of this glue where the isolation was glued and I'm gonna just scuff a little bit with the wire brush the paint so the primer can stick away. Well. Not gonna do more than that. Okay. I think that was the ceiling. Now, start going down. Oh, actually, this surface here. I don't know what kind of paint they used here, but it's coming off so easy. 
on the ceiling at least it wasn't coming easy, but here probably they didn't use any primer. Alright, so the ceiling is all done now. And there's a little bit of rust here. I think uh, when I took the headliner out there was a spot here from my piece, so even they managed to make my my car rust. <laughs> I'm gonna treat it with a rust converter this area here because that's the only rust even the only even surface rust that I see here inside so that's a good thing. So the whole ceiling is done and I'm gonna try to clean this wheel well now. Let me show you which wheel well. <laughs> This will well. Oh, you see that, guys? Huh? I have issues here. Even though I didn't think so, even though I didn't think so, but there is some rust here. Huh. We will see this because that's only the tip of the iceberg, as they say. Oh, even here! Wow. I might have some more issues to solve here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It was too good to be true, right? Uh, and I already painted outside and everything. How come I didn't see that on the outside? Can you tell me? We're gonna have to start repairs again. And the other side is not better. Alright. And the other side is not better at all. Oh, so that's right behind the mount, right? Behind the um, uh, shock mount. How come I didn't see it on the outside? And I didn't even lift this insulation here, this stupid padding. To, to check it. Anyways, it is what it is. We're gonna have to start dealing with it. Right? Alright, so it's time to look at this. Uh, I hope it's not a can of worms. It's an easy fix, but we will see because uh, I figured out there are two layers of metal there. Oh. So there's this big plate underneath, which is uh, the like a stiffener piece or a reinforcement piece for the shock mount and in the same plate you have the nut for the seat belt and when I was looking inside the in well, in, inside the wheel well there was absolutely no issues there and I was surprised but actually the issues are on this side of the wheel well which is uh, weird for me but obviously this is how the physics work so I'm hoping that I don't need to cut the wheel well uh, on the outside or the inside or whatever we want to call it on the other side, on the tire side so uh, I hope that I will be able to fix everything from here so my plan is to open it from here and see what's inside and we'll go from there, you know What I'm, I think I'm gonna get rid of this bracket because there's rust underneath too and then I'm gonna cut this whole plate here come on guys don't tell me you missed that hmm your battery was dead again yeah, that was interesting I, so what I did was I cut this bed plate from inside 
and um, this is the back of the outer plate and it has just one hole here which is uh, probably inside the shock mount you can see if I can see anything from here no there's a tire there so so the good thing is the the plate this plate is full. the external one there's only this hole here but it was all full with stuff like that that's the back part of this plate I guess anyway so what I'm doing now is I'm cleaning up around to find where the spot welds are for the external plate and I'm gonna cut all the inner and all the metal close to the spot welds and I'm gonna replace it of course I'm gonna uh, rust convert this plate from this side I'm gonna repair this hole and I'm gonna repair all the metal here and then I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna seal the ends of the plate with seam sealer or even I might use urethane which is a little bit more reliable and so I don't let water go in between the two plates again anymore but uh, it is actually better than what I expected I expected a big can of worms here but actually it's uh, just a small can of worms <laughs> I think I'm gonna do, I'm still here, yeah. Now I'm gonna clean here to find these spot welds for the shock mount and I'm gonna cut this open too and I'm gonna clean the body mount of the shock mount inside and then we're gonna close this area back. Interesting guys, look there's no there's no rust here, only at the bottom. That's funny. So is this galvanized plate or what? <laughs> so where did this come from? The good thing is that everywhere where the plates attach to each other, it is solid. It was rusted only here and this external plate. So, so that's good. Alright, so I think all the bed metal is cut now. So I'm gonna rust convert it now. When the rust converter takes its uh, effect, I'm gonna... Uh, paint with the rust guard paint inside and then I'm gonna weld this and then I'm gonna paint this inside and then I'm gonna start making patches for here I think here I'm gonna go into three or four vertical patches that's gonna be the easiest way otherwise I'm not gonna be able to make this patch in one piece unless I have English wheel and unless I know how to use it so I'm going to do it the lazy way, the Elin's way, by making little patches. So that's the rust converter. I'm going to soak it into rust converter. for the rust converter to uh, work its magic we're gonna start doing the other side the other can of worms I was planning to leave this bracket 
here until I assemble the other side so I can have it for reference. But now if we take this out we're not going to have any reference so I'm going to just measure where it is so it is two and a half inches height or two and five eighths. I'm going to write it here so I don't forget. Two and five eighths. And about the horizontal position and it is between these two lines. Not very precise. Okay, here too. Not very precise, but I don't even know what these brackets are for. But anyways, they don't have nuts on them, so this means that uh, I can relocate the hole if I need to. Okay, so let's and do the same thing on this side. just figured out that this is where I can use one of the few jeans tools. That's excellent, huh? I love this tool. Thanks so much, Eugene. <laughs> Let's do the other side as well because there's some uh, there's some remainings of rust there too. You see here, there's more rust. So you see, I was going to miss that and this. So actually, that's a beautiful tool. Cleans it up and it also shows you where the weak metal is. Excellent. And that's all brazing here. It's going to be hard to weld. But we're going to figure it out. Okay, I'm going to rust convert it one more time. And I'm going to open the other side also here to clean it inside and to make sure that everything is fine inside there. And we're going to start patching them after. There's only surface rust, which means that there was no water going inside, so I'm not going to bother too much with that. I'm just going to rust convert it, and I'm going to close it. And later, and then we're going to start getting our patches ready. There's a hole here, which I don't know what is it for. But it is obviously a factory hole that is only on the plate but not on the inner fender and that's how water goes in. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld it shut because obviously it's not used. So I'm just gonna weld it shut. 
And while I'm waiting for the rust converter here, I'm gonna also apply some rust converter inside the doors because here, up here, there's a lot of surface rust and I want to get rid of that and I want to paint the doors inside so I'm gonna show you if I can so you're looking through the opening for the lock of the door and you see there's a lot of rust here and here not a lot but it is uh, surface rust so I'm gonna rust convert everything I'm not gonna get rid of the insulation on the, st on the side the sound deadening, I don't think it's uh, in a bad shape, so I'm just gonna leave it there and let me do the rust conversion. Okay, so both doors are done. And uh, I think now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna paint the two um, shock mounts inside and I'm gonna weld them shut and also I'm gonna have to do these two repairs here and uh, yeah, slowly slowly let's start putting it back together Oops, the boss is calling guys. Okay, I gotta go now, but I'm gonna see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.